Hello YouTube, got some really 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 good software to show for you here called Virtual Audio Cables Now as you can see I have my game audio Skype and TeamSpeak audio and microphone all in separate audio channels Now I'm going to show you through this tutorial on how to get this done So you will have the game audio with your comms and with your mic all separate in audio streams the easiest way to get this done from my understanding after looking around for the, to figure out this issue of keeping your audio with Skype and TeamSpeak away from your game audio is to use a program called Virtual Audio Cables and this is the program as you can see here I have Virtual Audio Cable 1 going into Virtual Audio Cable 2 and then we have Virtual Audio Cable 2 and then it goes into my default output device, which is my onboard audio. Now I'll show you the setup on the XTory, and then we we'll get into how you go about setting this program up itself. Um, so, as you can see now on the XTory, we have LAN1, which is game audio. LAN1, game audio is on LAN1. Then we have LAN 2, which is virtual audio cable 2, is your TeamSpeak and Skype calls, so that gets recorded into another channel. And then the last one is obviously your microphone. So, you also have in Skype, is you have your audio, your speakers set to LAN 2, LAN 2 here, LAN 2 here, recorded through that. So, we'll save that and we'll minimize this for now. Right. So as you can see here, if I mute my microphone and mute the um, Skype call, you did just game audio. So if I mute the game audio and just enable the Skype call, hopefully someone's talking this one. <laughs> Get some talking. You're crap, Jets. There we go. And then obviously the last one is my microphone. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to obviously record and record a lot of game footage and if you're not happy with the comms you can actually just remove them and just you know do your editing with just your game audio basically. Or you can cut bits out here and there whereas before I was having problems because I really enjoy using the comms but also enjoy recording so I was fussy on the parts I was picking because sometimes I didn't always want the, the, um, the Skype or the TeamSpeak or the Army microphone just the game audio whereas doing it this way it allows you to do a, a lot better editing so now that that's out the way I'll show you how, how the program actually works so when you very first install the program before you even open any of these audio repeaters you're going to want to go to control panel now right click and run as a manual stator now here you see the audio in control panel now you can use these settings if you like to these aren't the default settings I've had a little play around with this program and, and change bits here and there to get it get it get better these points here the underflows and overflows you don't want any of them increasing that's that's a sign of errors happening so you want to try and keep these on notes at all times whether that means that you're increasing the buffer by slightly or increasing the path slightly. Now, I am no expert with this software by all means. I, I know little bits and I'm just giving you my insights. But if you have any questions, you can leave them in the description and I will try and help you as best as I can. For the main part, when you're very first starting off, you just want to set the cables from 1 to 2 and click set and then exit out of this. Then you want to open two audio repeaters. So we're going to open two of them, one, two, so we have two of them open. Now your first one is going to be virtual cable one, game audio, going out to virtual audio cable two. Then your next one is virtual audio cable two, which is your Skype calls, TeamSpeak, going then back to whatever your default um, like on board or, or sound card. I'm talking about the sound card. I actually own a sound card at the same time, but I had more success with this program by using the on board audio than I did using the sound card. 
so that's down for you if you have multiple audio outputs to decide yourself so i'll just set on the realtor now also another thing to note is make sure that you keep the sample rate the same throughout everything now that means even in your playback devices right click on your um, audio and go to probabilities on advanced and make sure that they're all the same so i've got 48,000, 48,000 and, and 16 bit 16 bit and so on right so on to just this part you know i want to change these so i use 40,000 40,000 i increase the buffer to 150 is what i found works best 150 um, I increased the part slightly to 15 just to get made to stay a little bit more stable for me uh, and, and that's basically it once you've done that you basically click start and I'll move over to you because I've already got one so you click start and then you start seeing these moving like that so then you want to set LAN1 as your default device and speakers as your default communication device now now that that's done uh, let's just see yeah, yeah. So now that that's done, you should start in um, your audio again. You can just test it by right clicking and, and click just to make sure you got your audio back working again. And just test for some edits and stuff. And that's pretty much it on this part of setting it up. Now, there's one little downside to this program, and every time you open the audio repeater, it's as you can see, it's back to the default settings. Now, there is a very, very good workaround for this. It's called creating a back file. Now, if you go into your start or programs, right click on your start folder and go to open. Now, as you can see, uh, I've got audio one, audio two. Now, if I run one of these, see it's minimized down here, it's already started up. And I have it in the starter folder, so it runs this program automatically and loads them up. Now I'll show you how you do this. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll even leave this all this in the um, description for you, so you can copy them. But you will have to change your out inputs and outputs depending on. Let's just say that's radio cable two. So on this one, you will have to change the output to whatever your actual name of your device is and you, you've got all the sample rates and all that here so what we do is i'll just use this as an example I'll open it up copy it now what you want to do is you want to create a text file so we're just going to call this one test oh open it up paste it in there now once you've got that set up like like that like so you go to file save as and then click just off the test and type in dot bat bat and save and then close and you will see that you've got two files so you can just delete the test one now and you see that you've got the test so now when windows starts up it will also run that program auto start and everything up all your settings and you've still got your audio. And I think that pretty much covers it. Um, yeah, like I said, if you have any more questions, please do leave a comment. If you like this video, please do give a thumbs up. If you dislike it, fine. Explain why. Leave it in the comment section. Um, and I will see you guys soon. I really, really enjoy this program, and I thought I'd definitely, definitely worth a share, especially if you're into recording and get gameplays and you're using. Um, like to Skype and TeamSpeak and it's a very good program on keeping the audio separate and so on. Alright guys, cheers, I'll see you again soon.